Okay. How you guys doing, Facebook family, Panvisio family? My name is Joe Lopez, help all as well. Uh, this website review is going to go a little bit more in-depth on not on the front-end review, but also the back-end review, and why that's particularly important for churches and church websites. Um, but first, a quick story about um, what prompted this, this video. Um, I'm helping out a church in South Jersey with their website. This is their website as it stands right now. Um, and after working on it for a couple of weeks, little by little, uh, we have a pretty much a, a, a new design, a new draft that's coming out. And I figured I'd reach out to uh, a contact that I know who handles like the church development of those churches of the same denomination in the region. So I said, hey, um, I just want to reach out. I could be of service. I can do a quick workshop or seminar on websites and church websites and how important they are, and yada, yada, yada. Uh, I got a reply back that was a little uncomfortable for me, a little disconcerting. Uh, the reply was, um, everyone has someone in their church that handles the tech stuff. Um, I don't see a need right now. And plus, you know, we help out with that anyways at the, at the district office. And uh, I got it, I'd be honest, my jaw dropped, um, mainly because, not the other elements, but because the, the, the V word uh, or the, uh, I don't think there's opportunity or um, there's no need right now. There's no, there's no value right now for that. Um, and what prompted the initial outreach was that I looked at other websites from the region and saw that there were some churches that didn't even have a website. And when it did, um, it was pretty, um, you know, uh, uh, less than stellar. And, uh, this is not just about having a website, you know, I mean, I mean, basic things, um, that were really, uh, uh really created a bad first impression as a visitor. And so I kind of leaned in on the conversation, sent an email back and said, hey, isn't, I just wanted to clarify, it's not just to have a website, just to have a website, but it's actually you know, a way to get new members and be more accessible to the community. And all those things are part of growth and church development, which this guy was technically in charge of, right? That was his role to help grow churches and help the region in that regard. And so def, I sent him some articles and that's when he got on board. And so um, uh, we're working on a, on a, a workshop for churches in the regions that I'll we'll be presenting. Um, and, and here's the key that, that really drove it home for him. It's not just to have a website to have a website. It's also to have a website that is friendly for volunteers. Um, and there's this correlation and if you're if you're by a desk or sitting down somewhere you got to put a star next to this or remember to talk to if you belong to a church to talk this to your pastor or someone who's in charge but i can pretty much tell the health and vitality of a church in how they handle their volunteers and how they care for them and how they support them and if you have a website that is complete crap um and you have someone in charge of the website they're not they're way less likely to be successful. And that is the key to success. I would say that's probably like, you know, 80% of what, what 50%, you know, of what makes a church grow is how structured is your volunteer management and what do you do to make them successful and, and support them? Because when volunteers who help with websites or events or admin support data, if they're getting the best of the best, or even not the best, like just the bare minimum of the best practices, um, people feel that, they see it, and it impacts uh, visitors, it impacts um, volunteers' growth as well. And so instantly I can tell within probably within the first 15, 20 minutes, if I'm talking to a church administrator or pastor, asking a few questions about how they go about volunteer management or website management or data management, that they're going to be, they're they're more likely to be hurting financially as as and, and not because of that, but the correlation is there, um, and so uh, maybe it is caused because of that um, in some cases. So just to put it out there, you know, this website review is not just about the front end, but it's about the back end and how are you thinking about members, uh, your volunteer members. So this is the website that we have currently, and pretty standard here. Banners there, text heavy, but still some images. 
food pantry, small groups, prayer request. And, you know, not too bad. Tabs up top here. Not bad. Contact us. No big deal. You know, pretty standard. News and updates. Um, here's a problem. Uh, some information here is outdated. Does, we don't have uh, certain events at that th those times. So your people might be coming to the church and finding themselves alone, which will piss me off. Um, and so that's one thing. Outdated. Two, to update this website, there was one thing to do uh, that was kind of ridiculous. You had to, if you had to type something out, you had to type it in Word. Then once you're done typing out in Word, you you know you format, you know you put the spacing the way you want it. Then you copy and paste it in like Notepad, which strips all the formatting. And then when you put it in Notepad, that's when you upload it or paste it up um, on the website. And you know cross your fingers, the formatting went right. Um, and that was a problem for maintaining the website and making sure it was fresh and you know uh because volunteers are working with limited time and so if they're going to be approaching something that's not easy or not smooth or you know um just tricky uh they'll find something else that's easy to do they'll go for the quick win, win. and we all do it like you know if it's a project we've got to work on or a problem we have to solve sometimes we'll just open up the email just to just to get a quick wins to feel like we're productive and feel like we're going to do something like that right it's a psychological thing. It's a human behavior. So knowing this, um, I always suggest Weebly or some form of, or WordPress if you're a little more, if you have more uh, uh, dedica uh, dedicated staff on learning and maintaining it. But Weebly for the most part is probably the most friendly website design uh, platform for, for churches and small businesses. Um, and I recommended it to them. And now we're on this design a little more cleaner, modern. And by the way, Weebly has um, mobile-friendly designs uh, where if I look to this website uh, on, on, on a mobile device, it renders really well. Whereas this thing, you have to pinch to zoom and hopefully copy and paste from the right place if you're copying the address and that kind of thing. Um, this will render automatically on a mobile device. Really nice. Um, so that's one thing, okay? And... It just got me uh, thinking about what it takes for churches to understand this. And it's sad, but you know, it wouldn't be good enough if I cited the best of the best of marketing and website designers and you know business sources. It's not good enough. I have to go to places like this blog by Tom Rainer, who's the CEO of, um, of uh, Lifeway Curriculum and Publishing for church, like Bibles, devotionals, books, um, curriculum for like vacation Bible schools over the summer and thing like that. Big guy has his own blog and actually his own podcast. Look at that. Um, and one of the, his websites, uh, one, of, one of his posts was about the seven deadly sins of a church. And he says nine out of 10 people will get their first impression of your church based on what they see on your website. Nine out of 10 people. And if your church website is crap, you'll be missing nine out of 10 visitors, potentially. Even if you're conservative, 50%. One out of every two people will say no to your church and look for something else because your website is crap. So here's some of the reasons. Dated both in design and content. It looks cheaply and looks, you know, it was made on a budget. And uh, good news is, there's, there's really good alternatives to um, website design like Weebly that make it that's cheap, but also well-designed. And it really has a huge impact. Is, and I'll finish with this. Anyone who's in the faith-based community, if you have a church website that is not um, doing a great job at bringing people in or just not great at all and you want more out of it, you owe it to the people you serve to update that. And the reason why it's a hot button topic for me is that it's one thing to help a nonprofit or business, you know, grow and develop their website because they want to grow either donations or sales or whatever it is. Um, it's one thing to do that. But when you're in the business of saving souls, you better have a fire under your butt to make sure you get this right. And the excuse of not having a budget is no longer acceptable anymore. It's 2016. There's amazing tools out there 
um, that can help you be successful in this space um, for free or close to free. And if you're not making that investment, you really have to, you know, um, take a look at what's driving your assumptions and your worldview about all this stuff, because you're missing out and your impact is being missed by those you're trying to serve. So um, just a word of tough love for those churches and, and nonprofits that, you know, feel like, uh, one, they don't have a budget for this, or two, you know, I just, I'm just not techy enough. You got to get this. is This is a non-negotiable. You got to get it right. So uh, with that said, I have to go to these type of sources to make this point with these uh, when I'm serving churches. I wish they didn't have to, but it is what it is. Um, that's it for now. Um, have a great one. And I'm setting off and catch you next week. See ya.